Hello everybody and welcome back to another layer by layer. In this week's tutorial, I thought I would show you how to put together, how I put together um, the Adafruit spinner using Fusion 360 and sculpting tools. So this is a very simple little project that uses a 608 ball bearing to make a fidget spinner. If you don't know what the fidget spinners are, it's one of those uh, fidgeting toys that's been quite popularized by 3D printing and they're very fun to kind of work on and design your own. And the Adafruit logo is actually a great shape for making a fidget spinner. So uh, if you check out the learning guide for this project, you can get a little glimpse of uh, how ball bearings work and what kind of parts you need. You just need a 608ZZ ball bearing, which is sort of the standard ball bearings, and a little bit of lubrication uh, to make it uh, free spinning, which is a lot of fun. This part does require some support material because it's printed vertically on a 3D printer and a raft also helps keep it adhered to the bed. So you, you will need to enable some support material, but it comes out incredibly nice. I actually 3D printed this on several 3D printers and I used Cura and Simplify 3D. They both come out pretty nice. And in this week's project, uh, I just wanted to show you guys how you can put together uh, a similar shape using Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and get started here. I actually started off by making a little sketch. So using the circle tool, I'm actually making a, a circle for the ball bearing. And the ball bearing is actually 22 millimeters in diameter. So we, we want to have this as a reference before we actually uh, create our fidget spinner. The next thing I did is I actually referenced the Adafruit logo itself. So uh, over here under insert, you can use a t attach canvas, select image, and then you can select any image uh, that you can pull anywhere. You select where you want it, and then Fusion basically pl places it as a item that you can use in the grid. So you can use these handles here to kind of manipulate the shape, rotate it or scale it in this case. I obviously want to make it bigger than the circle itself. So somewhere about here is fine. And there's some more options here in the panel, but for the most part, everything is fine. I'll probably change the canvas to uh, drop the opacity a little bit, just so I can see the grid, because we will be using the grid as reference points. So I'll hit okay. There's a canvas that gets made as a, uh, a little thing here. And if you want to modify it, you can right click on it, hit edit canvas, and you can move it around. Obviously. It's not exactly in the center here, so we try to get that in the center as best as we can. Something like that would probably be good. All right, so now that we have a reference point, I'm gonna make a new sketch. So far we have one sketch, which is our uh, a reference for the, the actual ball bearing. I'm gonna make a new one, so create sketch. I'm gonna make it on this plane, same plane. And what I'll do is I'll hide sketch one, which is our little circle thing, just to keep it out of the way. And I'm going to use the spline tool. So under sketch, there's this spline tool, which creates very smooth curvature. So the goal here is to make one petal and then duplicate it five times to make the Adafruit logo because it's very symmetrical. So we just need one petal. So at this point, uh, I'm going to make a, I'm going to click to make a point, and then I'm kind of going to guesstimate where these points can be. And they don't have to be perfect at first because we're going to modify them later. So I'm thinking somewhere between here, maybe over here. And you can kind of try to make this as symmetrical as possible. You can reference this like that, kind of drag your point, and then over here. And I probably missed one over here, so let's try to do that again. Because it's a little bit more difficult to add points after you've created them, especially with splines. So let's do it again. So something like here, one, two, three, four. And then I need to make four again on this side. So one, two, three. And then this is still the fourth one. So once we click it, it's a little wonky, but if we hit the escape key, we can then select these points. And if you click on the point itself, you'll get these little green handles. And these are Bezier curves. Uh, are, these are the handles that create these bezing curves, and you see the little green reference point, and that's kind of showing how uh, the curvature is related to the handle. 
So the goal here is to kind of make these points, move them around until you have something very symmetrical and that resembles the our reference image, which is our Adafruit logo. And it takes a little bit to kind of finesse it and get it exactly how we want it. But what we'll do is we'll just kind of move it around until we get something that kind of resembles it. It doesn't have to be exact for this tutorial because it does take a little bit of time uh, to get this exactly perfect. But no manner. We'll, we're just kind of kind of go through this. The main goal here is, of course, to make this as symmetrical as possible. So all the points and all the Bezier curves should be um, as kind of symmetrical as we can get it. So referencing this side to this side and using uh, the green line, which is our most likely our y-axis. Yeah, our y-axis. Using that as a kind of reference guide. But I think for now, that doesn't look too bad. So at this point, now that we have, once we find a fine tune this, it's not exactly fine tuned, but let's pretend it is. <laughs> I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to use the S key, the the S key on your keyboard to bring up the sketch toolbox. And I type in circular pattern, and this is the one I want, so let's hit enter. And now I get this circular pattern panel. Now I can select a center point, which will be this guy over here in the center of our grid because we're kind of working within it. And by default it sets three, so I can crank this up to five. And you can see how it kind of creates all those shapes here. And they're not they're not intersecting with each other. So that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. So we will have to kind of tweak them until we get it. And sometimes you can just move by selecting uh, our first our main kind of copy, we can move it around and you'll see that they kind of move all together because it's referencing uh, a copy, it's referencing the copy, the pattern is referencing this one copy, so we can kind of move it around. And it doesn't look exact uh, with the Adafruit logo, but that's fine. If I hide it, it, it still resembles it pretty good. So at this point, I think I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to hit stop sketch. And now we have our sort of sketch that we can work with. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to create and hit create form because we're going to create this form using the sculpt tools. So the next thing is under inside the sculpt environment, I'm going to hit extrude and then I'm going to select all the profiles, including the ones that are intersecting here like this by holding down the command key and just make sure we select all of our petals and the petals that intersect with each other. So like that. And what you'll notice is that we get this sort of, um, looks like we have a problem here. There we go. Hmm. Looks like we we kind of messed up here in terms of uh, the petal. It looked like it was double selected. So let me try to select those again. Got that. We get the middle and then these little intersecting points. Again, holding down command to join them to our selection group. Like that. Okay, let's hope that's good. Okay. Now you'll notice that it's very curvy. It doesn't follow the path. That's because we don't have enough faces. By default, it's set to eight. So I'm gonna crank this up to 40. And now we have enough faces to create our geometry. So that's looking pretty good. Another thing, if you find that it doesn't match out so well, even with 40 faces, you could change uh, the, the spacing from curvature to uniform, and it gives it more of a uniform look. So yeah, it's always a good option there. But it follows it most uh, pro pretty closely. The direction is set to one-sided, and the operation is set to new body. And the extrusion itself is set to a distance of 2. I'm going to crank that up to 5. Hit OK. Now we have kind of like a cookie cutter type shape. And the next thing we want to do is close off this surface here. And we can do that easily. So if I hover over one of these lines and double click it, it'll select a chain here, a loop of the outer edge of our extrusion. And now what I can do is I can right click. There's some, some options available for me. One of them is called fill hole. So I'm going to click on fill hole. And by default, the mode is most likely set to like reduce star, which looks very wonky. For some objects, that would work well. But for this one, we want to change it to collapse. 
And what collapse does is it makes a very unified curvature throughout all of the edges. So it makes this beautiful curvy surface. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now we have half of our Adafruit logo. And what we wanna do is we wanna duplicate this. There is a option to do so under symmetry. You can use the mirror duplicate function, select our object, and then our mirror plane will be uh, this plane here, which is on the floor of the grid. Make sure weld is selected. So I'll hit OK. And now it has created a very lovely, very curvy, curvy Adafruit logo. I'll hit finish form and Fusion will convert that form into a actual solid. So this is now manifold, perfect for 3D printing. And it basically resembles our Adafruit logo at this point. We can draw some, if we wanted to not make a spinner and make like the little, um, the little seeds, we could do that as well in another sketch and then just kind of project them on or, or cut them through. And what we want to do now is create our circle cut out for the spinner. We can do that by bringing back our sketch, hitting E to extrude, and I'll change the direction to symmetric, and then just pull the handle until I cut through the whole thing. And now we have our Adafruit spinner. I would also probably round off these edges here uh, just by selecting them. It, it's not a, uh, a loop, a continuous loop because of our geometry that we've created. Um, but you can select all of them and make a, a fillet, maybe not so large, maybe like one. One looks okay. And that'll help kind of print it nicely. And uh, the next thing I want to kind of advise you guys is that this has to be printed. Uh, it could be printed flat, but I don't recommend printing it flat. I printed it vertically because it, it creates the best, uh, the best geometry uh, on your 3D printer since they're stacking layers on top of each other. Uh, one thing I do recommend, though, is before printing this out as a whole, I recommend making a test. So I'll use this sketch for the center... Uh, for the center uh, hole. And I'm gonna offset it out to like five millimeters. And then I'll create a flat edge here at the bottom using uh, the rectangle tool. So I can kind of create this like that. I'll hit stop sketch. And then I will select these profiles like that. And then I'll extrude it out to about eight millimeters just to have a bit of a uh, a little bit of uh, material to work with. I'll hit OK. Obviously my bodies was, was hidden. So I'll bring that back and hide body one. And now I have this testing thing. The last thing to do is to orient it. So I'll use the line to align this with uh, maybe that right there. Flip it so it's up. And now what I can do is use this, 3D print this, and then test out the tolerances. And what I found here, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring it into my slicer here by right clicking save out STL and then checking this box here, send to the utility, where you have an option to select a Cura or a Mesh Mixer or anything that you have selected. In my case, I'm using Simplify 3D. So let me bring that in. Okay, and there is our little tester, fidget spinner tester for testing our tolerances. So when I hit prepare to print, you can see I'm using uh, support material. I probably do not need any uh, raft because uh, it's a nice flat edge so I can adhere to the to the bottom. But as you can see, since uh, it is printing vertically, um, we do have to kind of open up the hole a little bit. So if we look at my original design, my, uh, my sketch is actually set to 11.4 or 22.4 of a diameter. If you look at the radius here at the bottom, it's 11.2. Just multiply that by two to get your diameter, and I get uh, 22.4 millimeters. So that's just a tip on showing you how you should probably test out uh, a sort of a sample piece, a small sample piece, before printing the entire thing like this. So that's basically how I put together this project. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions or any uh, better alternatives, please let me know. It'll help me out and a lot of people as well. Thank you so much uh, for watching. And be sure to check out the this week's project video and this week's uh, uh, tutorial if you are interested in doing so. That's going to be it for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.